Hello, Heatheart. Hello, dear listeners and Max Virtual Academy fans. I am very happy to introduce to you our wonderful guest, Heatheart Zoni. And the topic that we two are discussing today is microgrids and energy modeling. So stay interested. For those of you who don't know us, my name is Christine Leffler and I'm the manager of the Maxola Online Academy. We will link all the important information on where to find us and searching for courses and interviews like this one in the description below. So no worries. And in our interview or like I like to call it at the moment interview presentation series, you can find interesting talks about the solar industry and you will be able to hear stories of wonderful people like we have Peter today that have done some very interesting projects or and careers on their back when it comes to solar and renewable energy and they will share their knowledge with us. So, Heat Heart, please introduce yourself and then let's kick off with your wonderful presentation today. Yes, thank you very much, Christina. So, first of all, myself, Hitat Soni, and I am 25 years old. I am pursuing my master's degree in renewable energy system course at University of Applied Science, Nordhausen. So currently I am working with Max Solar as a master thesis student. Uh, my master thesis core base is about development of microgrid and energy system modeling of particular location. So uh, here I would like to explain you about my work through the presentation. So here is my presentation. So what is microgrid? So, if I say in a simple word, microgrid is a self-sustainable energy solution for the future. Now, you guys wonder how microgrid works, how, what is a microgrid in technical terms, right? So, microgrids are low voltage network or group of distributed energy system can provide heat, power and electricity to a preferred location by employing generators and loads. So all the energy sources can be a part of microgrid as you see in the presentation like photovoltaic power plant, wind power plant, solar thermal, battery storage. So these all can be a part of microgrid. So microgrid is local energy grid which supply locally generated energy with control capability which means it can be disconnected from traditional or national grid and operate independently. So this is about microgrid. So there are some numerous benefits of microgrid and it can be interesting topic for those who are entrepreneurs, students, solar industrialists, wind industrialists, energy consultants, etc. So these are the benefits of microgrid. Uh, first of all, it, it is an environment friendly uh, grid. So it reduces in investment cost. Uh, also it is an independent and reliable energy supply. It reduces CO2 emissions. So it directly proportional to environment. So uh, and also the main and the major benefit is that it leads to third party investment is possible. So if you own a company, if you are a student, if you uh, want to start your business, uh, you can directly in, in investment in, in the microgrid development. So it's a, a great opportunity for, for you guys. So my scientific project was about energy system modeling of Balearic Island. Mm -hmm. So where I have developed a uh, microgrid and um, energy system model for Balearic Island. So first of all, I would like to show you the location of Balearic Island. So the Balearic Island is located near the Spain. It's an island of Spain. 
so it it contains some major four cities Mallorca, Menorca, Formentera and Ibiza. So you guys wonder what is an energy system? What is an energy system model? So here I would like to explain you that what is an energy system. So an energy system are installed energy sources which are needed to provide an energy to consumers. So ultimately energy system is about demand of energy of particular area for for my work it it, it, it was Balearic Island. So energy system is about demand of energy of Balearic Island and behavior of consumer related to energy consumption. For example the consumers of Balearic Island they are using uh, electricity and energy uh, in the afternoon the consumers want to charge their electric vehicle two or three hours daily so these all are the behavior of consumer that how they are using and when they are using the energy so the understanding behavior of consumer is known as energy system so now what is an energy system modeling so energy system modeling is a set of equations that represent behavior of energy system for example while creating an energy system model while generating energy system modeling we have to take an, into account some factors like uh, we should maintain the demand of energy of the Alaric Island. We should planning accordingly and storage capacity which can provide energy during an emergency circumstances mm -hmm. for at least two or three days. So also energy system modeling, we can forecast the demand and supply. Also, we can reduce the CO2 emission via energy system modeling. Also, we can reduce cost of energy. So, these are the things which are taken into account while modeling energy system. So, I choose this topic just because uh, my ultimate goal is to make entire world green and dependent on renewable energy. So, I think that's a great goal. Um, and uh, I'm interested to hear how energy modeling can help to do that. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you very much. So, before uh, creating a model for Balearic Island, I have uh, researched about the current scenario in Balearic Island. So, currently, the Balearic Island, they are producing energy from the conventional energy like coal-based power plant, gas turbine, combined heat power plant, diesel generator, waste burning. Also, almost around 28% of energy, the Balearic Island is importing that those amount of energy from Spain via under underwater cable. So that was uh, such a disaster. Uh, and in the future it, it will be a problematic so that's why we have decided to make a model and make this island entirely from from the renewable energy as you see in the chart so only three or f three to five percent energy are producing from renewable so we have decided to work it work on it so we have used our OEMF software while creating energy model for the Balearic Island so you guys wonder what is OEMF so uh, OEMF is the open energy system modeling framework software where you can import data from github to OEMF platform it's a base of Python coding so uh, OEMOF can estimate the different types of model like forecasting model, analytical model, scenario model, simulation model or optimization model. 
So this all the things can be done in the OEMF software. And here are some components of model where, where while planning the energy system model, where you the the right hand side image. This is the flow of energy system where you can define your sources, where you can define your sink, you can define your energy burst, where you can define transformers. So what is, what are these uh, components? So I will uh, tell you a, a quick information for this component. So what is source? So source is, uh, for example, if you are generating electricity for from the photovoltaic plant, from the wind plant, so this all the plants can be your source. So now what is the sink? So the sink is the consumption of the energy. For example, if you are a consumer and if, uh, if you are consuming uh, energy, then, then all these demands are considered into sink components. Also, we have a transformers component for, for this software. So for the transformer, your transmission line, power grid, so all these uh, transfer transportation uh, things which will go to the transformer component and the bus. So these are the components of model of OEMF where you have to take care while creating a model. So these are on, on the left hand side you will see uh, image with all the libraries that it has. So it has this all these libraries where you can enter your data, enter your wind turbine power plant data, photovoltaic power plant data, and it will calculate via mathematical formula, uh, which is also including in the software. So you, you don't have to calculate by your own, it will directly calculate and it will give you a result. So here are, I'm going to show you some analytical results which I have uh, created during my uh, project. So my, my project was to creating a forecasting model for, for Balearic Island which we have planned for 2030 forecasting model. So, so the we compare our current scenario to, to upcoming future 2030 future scenario. So, if you are uh, planning to install wind farm on the Balearic Island, then it will give you this amount of energy in 2030 according to weather data. So, we have to also uh, import some data like weather data and wind turbine terminology, wind turbine data. So it will directly give you the result like this. Also, you can forecast the analysis for photovoltaic system. It will give you Iridian uh, forecast in 2030. So according to Iridian uh, forecast data, uh, you can also calculate the power which will uh, photovoltaic plant will give you in the future. So after that, you can calculate the total power output and you can compare it with the demand and you can plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. So the summary of the my my project is to make model of Balearic Island uh, would be using green energy source such as the wind energy, solar energy for this island and also we have analyzed on the GIS software. It is a software for geographical analysis where you can analyze analyze the location and the site that which and how much area you can utilize for your future planning, for, for your future energy power plant like photovoltaic and wind that where and how much amount of wind farm you are gonna install so our energy transition from coal to gas 
to renewable will fulfill the 100% of demand of this island. And that and will be course, and all, uh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, short question. And that will be then possible in 2030. Th this was what the energy system modeling has shown that you can really trans trans make the transition from gas to and coal to renew only using renewable energy as a source in 2030. Yes, Christina. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. That's right. Hmm. And then the Balearic Islands would be really just can use all the renewable energy for their own consumption and they, there will be no blackouts and stuff. This was what the energy uh, modeling has shown that with this base. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and also, uh, I'm working currently on my master thesis, which is a a similar topic for related to ma modeling and microgrid. So my master thesis topic is about energy system planning and electrification with uh, microgrid development in Berlin. So now I am planning to uh, develop a microgrid and a model in the Berlin location. So yes, guys. So it's very interesting for me to work on and also uh, one day we will achieve 100% uh, energy which the world will generate from the renewable sources. Oh, that's wonderfully said. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Hitard, so you are electrifying uh, Berlin with renewable energy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Christina. Okay, so, but... Mm, that also means that uh, OEM off ca can be used not only for solar, uh, for sorry, for for islands, but also for regions to be uh, electrified with microgrids, or you know how to find out how an energy transition can be done correctly to renewable energy. Is that is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. That, that is uh, totally correct. So you could really use this uh, software for modeling any energy system of the world. So for example, the Seychelles could use it to find out how to how much energy they are cons consuming and how they can slowly tr uh, trans uh, transform or transition to renewable or India could also use that. Is that is that true? Is that would that work? Yes, that is uh, that is a true. Uh, we can use this model at any location uh the, but only uh, one thing that we have to keep in mind that all the data should be available mm -hmm. so the data th this model the software will create a model based on the data right mm -hmm. so it is much needed that we have data like a weather data like uh, currently in your region cost data co2 data everything we need while creating a model so make sure to choose the location uh, before if you have some if you have all the data then you you will plan your energy system at any location ah so that is a good uh, point so for example countries who are maybe don't have that good databases for example on weather or it's not so easy to access it's a little bit harder to do the planning but if governments and i think that's what we all agreeing on we want to transition to renewable energy and if governments are investing in these things and and getting the data then these things would be possible and even interesting for the governments themselves to to build microgrids right yes mm. exactly mm -hmm. wow i'm i mean i'm very very interested in that topic one more question, Hitar. So um, with this software, you can also you can use them for wind, but you can also use them for solar. So it really can calculate uh, the consumption and the production of a solar plant, for example, as well. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, as I uh, as I told you, uh, it has some libraries uh, in built in in the software. Mm -hmm. So the library is particularly uh related to each uh, solar each plant let's have for an example if you want to calculate the solar calculation solar plant output if you want to calculate the wind output uh, 
Mm-hmm. So we have a libraries like PV Demand, PV Lib, Win Lib. So these are the libraries where you can enter all the data and it will show you the output and output how much amount of output data you will uh, get in the future. So yes, uh, it is possible in, in this software. Mm-hmm. And it will also show me mm, the 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 production um, by day or by month or only by year. How that how can I you know how? Uh, yes, uh, it will show you the data yearly basis on monthly basis, mm-hmm. also daily basis or, or hourly basis. Wow! So I would say this is quite an amazing tool to use in order to get an idea of how much energy your region or your city uses and to make a wonderful uh, forecast on how to transition to renewable energy. Mm. Yeah, Hitard, thank you very much for showing this and thank you very much for giving us some insights of your second year's project. Also, um, I think people could reach out to you and of course, if there is a demand, dear listeners and participants, if you're interested in learning more about this software and this tool and how to put in the data and how to work on it, I think Hitard is more than willing to share his knowledge further with you. We can have a training here in this wonderful virtual academy where we are right now with us uh, through my eyes, so to say. And yeah, and we can have a training, a webinar as well. So whatever it is, reach out to us, reach out to Heatheart. I think you can find him on LinkedIn. Is that true? Yes, uh, definitely, Christina. Yes, and I think we both would be happy if you reach out to us, uh, if you have more questions, comments, feedback. Maybe you already have some, you know, experience with it and you can also tell us some challenges, which I think would be really interesting for the audience and Heatard, who's currently, you know, trying to electrify Berlin. <laughs> so Heatard, thank you very much. Uh, anything else you would like to say? Uh, yes, Christina. So uh, if you guys have some uh, interest into planning a model or energy system or developing a microgrid please reach out to me i will definitely help you with my all my knowledge and uh, experience i have and we will make it successful ah uh, thank you very thank much you Wow, cool. So I give you a round of applause, Sitat. That was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Christina.